Scouting Report is sponsored by Penn State Health, giving you the care you want where you want it. Visit PennStateHealth.org to find a provider near you. We're back on Nittany Game Week. Time for the Scouting Report. And if you believe in the history of this game, and it will continue, Penn State has won 40 of 44 in the all-time series with one tie, including nine of the last 11. So, there's no worries, but if you consider they lost last year at home to the Terps and struggled to stop current quarterback Talia Tungavailoa, well, you might have reason to fear the Turtles. Coach Paterno, Coach Bradley, you've taken a detailed look. What do you see when you watch Maryland? I see some things that Penn State better be ready to handle and uh, a lot of talent in a lot of places. Start with the offense because they're really a good offensive football team and they are RPO team. They love this RPO stuff. Reading those guys, the linebackers and that safety, throwing them behind, take a look at it. And Tom, talk about as a defensive coach how much of a pain in the you know what this is. <laughs> it's a big pain because, you know, especially if they're moving the ball yep. and then you start those linebackers start coming up and they get this in behind them. It's, it's not an easy play, and this guy runs it very well for them. Yeah, when he, is, is, when he really sets his feet and throws it, it's there. Let's talk about their run game now, the north-south run game. A lot of down blocks, kickouts, and they're trying to get – they're not a real big outside run team, but talk about the, the problems this presents. Well, I, I see a lot of double-double stuff, just trying to get pushed, getting upfield, getting shoulder square, and they're going to run the counter game too. Get you going one way, bring a guard tackle back around the other, and let the – you know, they're either going to log block it or – you know, he's going to get outside or just cut it right up inside. Yeah. Now, we'll talk about the quarterback run game next. Again, this is not a big part of their offense, but it's enough that you got you got to respect it. They leave the defensive tackle here unblocked. Quarterback reads it and keeps it. And then, Tom, he, on the video, you'll see how, how he gets north and south here in a hurry. Well, one of the things, I don't think this is gonna, a huge part of their game, but they have to keep people honest with it. They've got to be able to do that. They don't want this guy running the ball. No, but if he does, uh, you've you got to handle him because he correct. can get you 20 yards. So let's talk about some matchups now that they present. Uh, Rakim Jarrett, if anybody watched the Penn State game last year against Maryland, they know this guy. He had two big touchdown passes. Find out where he's lined up. They're going to try and get matchups on him. Here he's number three in the slot. And that's a matchup issue for you as a defensive coach, right? It sure is because who's going on him? What, you, what do you like and what don't you like? And are you giving away your coverage by who ends up on him? Yeah, absolutely. And one last thing you're going to see. This, again, this is a wide-out oriented offense. A lot of wide-out screens. Penn State ran a lot of them last week. They're going to do the same thing here to get the ball to their play, playmakers. Yeah, because they're going to get, they're going to like the block and scheme outside. If they can't block them up front, let's get it outside, get it to our skill guys, get them to catch, make somebody miss, make a big play, make your corners tackle. Yeah, and, and you know, that's a throw at my advanced stage I can still make, and there's a gain of 12 or 13 yards. Not that I was ever uh, a great thrower in my non-advanced years either. <laughs> But I can still make that one. So let's talk about them defensively. Uh, last year they gave Penn State some problems defensively. They had seven sacks last year. They do a great, good job on the pass rush. A lot of twists, a lot of five-man rush. So they get one-on-ones across the board. Uh, let's take a look at this on tape here. Yeah, that's the one thing they're trying to get done. They love the one-on-one -on -one matchups, and, and they think they can beat you on some of those one-on-one -on -one matchups. And they're doing it as a fire zone type situation with their secondary. And they're going to add the linebacker to the rush if he's got the back to kind of take away the screens and those type of things. And some of these guys are back. So let's talk about their pass coverage matchups. Uh, probably their best cover guy is number 12, Tarheem Steele. Um, where is he going to go? Is he going to follow Dotson? Is he going to go there? So Penn State's got to find the best matchups because if they put their best guy in your guy, then go attack somebody else, right? That's what's going to happen here. And that's that's going to be the matchup of the day, I think, is what they decide to do with, with that particular with that that deep, corner, that yeah. defense corner. No question. And then let's talk a little bit now about uh, some of the other things they do. Their cornerback blitz. They're, the Penn State has not seen a lot of corner blitzes this year, but when they're on the hash, and the safety's outside the hash when you're watching at home. Take a look and see what that corner does. That safety's wide, the corner's tight, they're on the hash, and here he comes. And now he gets a penalty for this one, as he should. A <laughs> yeah. little bit of a late little hit little to late the head hit. there. He got anxious. One of the things everybody forgets, the hashes in college are different than the pros. It's a good thing to do. You can bring that to it's a short corner. And they'll also, they bring them outside like the old Cleveland stunt, or they yeah. bring them inside like the Chicago stunt. Whatever way they want to do it. So they do it a lot of different ways with him right here. You can see him coming inside there. Yep. And last but not least, red zone defense, much like Illinois, only giving up touchdowns about half the time, dropping a lot of guys, dropping defensive end to create a real hard read for the quarterback here take a look at this on film where Illinois is in the red zone has trouble getting them in there uh, and they were very very effective on that and and really Penn State was inside the 10 four times last year only scored twice 
Yeah, they're another. They're an excellent red zone defense. And you, all year they've been doing that. With the, and this particular scheme's tough sometimes. You got the three man rush with the ad by the linebacker. Absolutely. So Todd, you know Maryland, Penn State. Maryland's trying to create some kind of rivalry. Talk a little about that. Uh, absolutely. Of course, this has been one of those classic hammer and the nail matchups. You can't have a rivalry if you get hammered every year. But two seasons ago, Maryland shut down the campus for a Friday night game, canceled classes that day, hyped up the rivalry, only to see Penn State come in and blast them 59 nothing. The Terps got them last year during the COVID season. The Nittany Lions, they understand the assignment. Prepared like, you know, we always do. And, you know, effort and practice was great. And, you know, those little things like that is just, you know, a little bit more fuel to the fire. Um, but, you know, we attack each week, you know, uh, in, the, in its own and like we do every week and, you know, just go from there. Yeah, the game in 2019 was over soon after it started, thanks to plays like that from K.J. Hamler. But both teams are five and three. This is an important game for both programs. Time to take a break. Our impact interview is coming up. You know, this guy started a long, successful career in football at Penn State. NFL star, NFL executive, broadcaster, heart transplant recipient. All part of his story. We talk with Matt Millen when we come back. <laughs> 